What did you do? What did you do is the question that Kingpin asked Maya in the Echo series finale. And we're gonna try to answer that question. What exactly did Echo do to Kingpin in the series finale? Also, what does the future look like for Kingpin as well in the MC? We're gonna be talking about what the ending mean here of the Echo series. We're gonna be going through our spoiler review of the Echo series in this video. Welcome to Keep It A Comic, and I'm Goofy Rexy. Right out of the gate, I will say that the show was good for what it was. Is it the best thing that they've since sliced bread? No, it's not. Is it the worst? It's definitely not that as well. There were so much negative comments going into the entire series. Things about pandering, things about how it's going to flop, how it's going to be trash. I don't think it was either one of those things. I think it did a res pretty respectable job, if you ask me. What I loved about the series out of the gate was really the cultural exploration right if you're familiar with or if you're not familiar with maya in the comics she is native american she is from the cheyenne nation here of course in this series they decided to go with the choctaw nation out of tamaha oklahoma and i thought that they just did such a phenomenal job of really infusing that into the series and in not an over-the-top way but they the clothing was phenomenal right the music was really good i enjoyed the, the ideologies that they had, the power that they spoke about, the animal sort of connection that they went through. They did a lot of that in the comics as well. So it was nice to see them do that here on the screen, you know, on, on the TV screen um, in the show. And I always think that the MCU does a really good job of using their stage to explore a lot of cultural backgrounds. They did it with Black Panther, both of the Black Panther movies, actually. They did it with Miss Marvel. They did it with Shang-Chi. I just always said that they do a really good job of really kind of taking that us taking us on that journey and really exploring these backgrounds. I don't can never really speak of the specific accuracy of it per se, but I do think that they do a pretty good job. But in terms of journey, let's talk about journey, right? And I want to talk about Echo's journey. When I first heard about the series, I know what I wanted to see. I wanted to see her primarily just fight and beat some dudes up because that's what i remember her doing in the comics but i also wanted to see this character journey that she would embark on because in the comics yes maya does shoot kingpin after finding out that kingpin did kill her father she does do that after she goes away for some time and then she comes back finds out that kingpin is still alive this dude has two eye patches on his face essentially blind but then she embarks on this vision quest and this vision quest that she embarked on was really a self-exploration journey where she was trying to rid herself of the rage and the pain that she was feeling from the loss of her father and she realized that hey she can't take it out on kingpin she can't that's not gonna to solve or fill that void so she goes on the self-exploration journey and they did kind of do that a little bit here in the series but i unfortunately feel like it was just it was really rushed and they didn't really explore it in its entirety and in, in its fullness also of course they didn't do it the same exact way which we don't expect them to do the same exact thing that they do in the comics however i felt like going towards the very end of the episode where she now has the powers now where she's trying to heal kingpin of of whatever he got going on. And I'm like, how exactly did you heal that fast, right? I didn't really see where that transformation was ready to happen as of yet, because it didn't really feel like she had fully worked through the rage and the pain that she had. So I was a little disappointed to, to see that. I would have preferred if they had dedicated one episode to really that exploration, really kind of healing herself. She didn't really do that. And I felt like it was just too rushed and unrealistic. Even the conversation that she had with her grandmother was really rushed to me too. I, and I could tell that some of it was the editing. Like even the conversation that she had, I, like there was a point where, she, where they skipped to her with tears rolling down her eyes. And I was like, how did we get there that fast? Like, I felt like that wasn't the proper progression of the conversation. I just felt like the editing kind of made the pacing a little weird, if you ask me. And that was that was part of part of my issue, I think, with a lot of what they did in the series was some of the editing really kind of screwed up the pacing of the series and actually kind of left some things out of whack and felt out of context in regards to what they were doing. But that was just probably just maybe I'm just nitpicking at that point. But in terms of the fighting, let's go back to that really quickly here. Like I said, I really expected 
some really great amazing fight scenes we can talk about the daredevil one the daredevil one wasn't as bad in hd as i thought as it looked when it was the leaked footage it actually looked a little bit better but i think what i just enjoyed about that daredevil fight scene is the fact that daredevil was in it right that's it i was it that was it for me guys daredevil was in it but what i talked about in my episode one review was what really makes echo special from the comics is that she's able to mimic the fighting styles of any fire that she studies right in the comics when she went up against daredevil she was able to mimic daredevil's fighting style she also studied bullseye's fighting style and was able to mimic that and use both of those styles against daredevil so she essentially had the counter to daredevil and then also had another fighting style to be able to beat daredevil as well she also even rented out bruce lee movies and was able to mimic that style and be able to use that against daredevil as well and she doesn't just mimic the fighting styles of characters she also mimics things that just like other things like for instance like tony stark when he was flying a plane that's a complex plane to control she was able to just watch what he was doing and was able to then fly that plane. Nobody else was able to do that on the plane that she was on. So I just really interesting things that I, I think that they could have implemented into the series easily. I don't know why they left that aspect of her out, because I, I think it really would have enhanced her. The fact that she is deaf and that she's able to use these other senses to really capitalize on what she could do. It didn't really show how she could kind of like feel the vibration in the ground, or like I said, mimic and copy those fighting styles. I don't know why they chose to not really explore that. I thought it would have been a really good thing for to, to pay homage, you know, to people who are deaf and really kind of just show that you're still powerful, right? And I, and I just didn't think that they, they, that's what makes her really fun and exciting in the comics to me. And it didn't do that in the series. So that, that was a little bit frustrating. But in terms of like the fight scenes, there was one in particular that I really liked and that was her in the roller ring. This one was like Netflix-ish. It was gory. It was grounded. There was, it was, it just looked really good. Like even some, some of the, like her slamming down on, on one of the, one of the gaming machines and then like she punched one and then you can see the blood. I was, I was, I just loved it. It was just, it just reminded me of all the other Netflix series that I've watched, the Punisher series, the Daredevil series, like it was just really exciting to be able to see that. To, you know, to a certain extent, like some of these Netflix series, I don't even really remember the words that were said. I more so remember the fight scenes. And this was one where I was just like this, I, I can't get this one out of my head right now because I just thought it was really good. There just wasn't enough fighting in the series. That's That was the thing I would say that there just wasn't enough fighting in there. but. The fight scenes that we did get, I thought those are actually really good. And Maya's a badass, man. Like she was a badass in the comics and they showed a little, a little badassness here in the TV series as well. I just wanted to see more badassness, if you ask me, right? That was my thing. I just wanted to see more of it. I talked a little bit about the pacing already. I thought that the that the pacing had some issues. I think a lot of it had, comes down to the editing. This was supposed to originally be six episodes, but they chose to condense this only down to five episodes. And I feel like it took a lot of the context of the show out and just it left it left some empty spaces where I'm still asking questions. Like, for instance, what's going on with Bonnie? Like, I understand why Bonnie's important, but at the same time, I don't really understand why Bonnie's important. And I and I know it sounds silly for me to say that, but I feel like you understand what I mean by that, right? We they connected in the room where they were locked up together briefly. She punches her in the face. <laughs> And then the next time they really dialogue again after that is when she's captured again. And then she like sees her for a brief moment at the very end and doesn't really say anything to her. I'm like, can we get a little bit more just closure to that relationship a little bit? Like, can we get a little bit more exploration there? Like expand upon that. And so I understand why she's important because of course we saw her in the very first episode when they were kids. But also, why is she important? Like you, you didn't really show that to us. There also wasn't any twist in the series. Zero twist, guys. We it kind of just stayed this way for for the entire time. It really just stayed there, and and that was disappointing to me because I felt like a twist would have been a nice twist would have been like her uncle double crossing her, right? Like Henry just saying, "Nah, screw that, kill you," you know, like something like that, or or. Bonnie, we find out that Bonnie's really her sister and her dad is, you know, something like that. I just, something, so I, there was no wow factor 
really in the entirety of the series. I think we kind of know where, where things are going to go. It was very predictable. But with that being said, what they did give us was a, a good ish story with good cultural background representation. I think Alakwa Cox, I thought in the cast, I thought a lot of them did a really good job, especially you know, Alakwa. I thought she did, a, she did phenomenal there. I didn't expect this performance. I didn't expect it to be as believable. And I felt like there were a lot of moments where I was like, I felt that, like I felt what she was feeling there. But once again, I felt like they just really skipped ahead of some of the some of the times where I felt like they should have just rested in that moment. Similar to what I felt about the Marvels, like I felt like they really jumped around the emotions quite a bit. And that was where I said, you gotta give your audience like us an opportunity to be able to dwell in that moment too. Not just to be this quick, let's move on. I don't know if there if there's people in their ears that are telling them hey, you got to cut this shorter because people don't want to sit here and, and feel this. But I'm telling you, people want to feel like we, we want to connect. Like, so leave that stuff in there so that we have the opportunity to be able to, to connect. But I thought I thought she did amazing, man. I, I really do. I, I'm actually hoping to see her again. I, I like her character. But I just want them to implement some more of what we see from her in the comics here. But other cast members, I actually my favorite was Scully. I actually really like really like Scully. I thought he was funny. But he had the right tone for pretty much every single moment. I love this joke and personality, but and also kind of man, this this man was this man was put in was put in Echo in put in my in check. He was putting Chula in check. He was pretty much dropping a lot of knowledge. And I, I really like this character, silly character, but at the same time, really offered a lot of, well, in a lot of ways, like he was kind of like the denominator, the common denominator to both of them kind of making a change and making a shift in the series. So I've really liked this character. Vincent, again, as Kingpin, I mean, this dude is just an animal, man, like superb. There was not a scene where I felt like he was in it, where I was like, I'm not captivated by what's happening in this moment. There was no scene where I felt that way. Just, just amazing. Charlie Cox, I love. I, I'm not. I'm not showing the picture right now, but I like that there was a little smirk that he gave in one of those scenes. I thought that was. I was like typical Charlie Cox, Daredevil man. Loved it. Like I said, love seeing him in that first scene here. Uh, so, to me personally, it's a good, good, good series. Now, in terms of the ending, Maya. What I think Maya did was. I think she when she did this, I think she just healed Kingpin of his rage, right? And I think that really affected what's, what's why he was like, what did you do? Because he's like, that rage is what's driving him all the time to be great, right? To be a Kingpin. So him, her taking that away from him, like, is he the same in Kingpin now? Like, are we gonna get that same sort of just like determined strategist, just willing to do whatever? Cause let's be real. When, when you when you saw this man kill the interpreter, I was like, bro, him, but that's Kingpin, right? So I, I I gotta say, I I enjoyed I enjoyed him, I enjoyed that, but now I'm wondering, is this gonna be the same Kingpin now? I'm, I'm I don't I don't know I don't know, but at the very end, of course, we see him talking and, and listening to the TV where. They're discussing that they need a fighter to be mayor. My, of course, well, I think there was already some rumors out there that he's going to end up being mayor of New York, and that's going to be tying into the Daredevil Born Again series, which I think is what we're expecting is going to happen. That he's actually in the comics, he actually does become the mayor after rigging it quite a bit, but he does become the mayor in the comics. So I think that they're going to be following the same route. I'm um, here. I think also King they, men they mentioned that Kingpin is going to be the Thanos, right? of the city of the grounded the grounded sort of heroes here so i am expecting that he's going to be a part of spider-man he's going to be a part of daredevil whatever other street level stuff happened in hell's kitchen you're going to see um, that he's going to have a major impact where that's concerned too so i i'm looking forward to it i love kingpin i think he's such a phenomenal character he's unhinged he's just great so i'm really open that that rage that he's healed from that if that is the case that he's able to kind of still find a purpose and still end up being the king being here but real quick the intro to echo was good the intro to echo was really good actually i really i really like the opening scene their intro what was amazing overall i'll give the give it a score of a seven out of ten i would have loved to give it an eight out of ten but there just wasn't good enough cohesive storytelling and not enough fight scenes but I'm giving it a seven out of 10 with, feel, with all the complaints that I have, right, about it, because I still feel like they gave a good story. They gave good cultural representation. They gave, I, I, I thought Alakwa was, was better than what I expected. 
I think Kingpin really kind of rose his shield, elevated the show to another level. I just, I feel like there's a lot to be desired though. And that's the reason why I give it a seven out of 10. I would say even six and a half out of 10 is probably where I would leave it. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are here. Leave it in the comments. What do you think about the Echo series? I almost said the Daredevil series. I'm looking forward to the Daredevil series. What do you think about the Echo series here? Leave it out in the comments. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Check out our next video on the channel here. And until next time, guys, like I said, I'm Goofy Rexy. Thanks so much for kicking it. We're keeping the comic.